Welcome back to Cosmic Comics. As much as I just want to jump right into the big purple guy, before I get there, we need to discuss another item of power within the Marvel Universe. The Cosmic Cube. Not the Tesseract. The Cosmic Cube. The Cosmic Cube was introduced in Tales of Suspense, Volume 1, Issue Number 79, published in 1966 and written by Stan Lee. Our introduction begins with the second story in the issue, The Red Skull Lives. This will be the first post-World War II appearance of the Red Skull, so let's back up just a little bit further. At the end of World War II, Captain America and Red Skull faced off against one another in a bunker. Before the battle was over, a blockbuster bomb caused the bunker to collapse. During the collapse, an experimental gas was released that held Red Skull in suspended animation for years. In the bunker, beside Red Skull were two others whose lives were saved by the gas, Wolfgang Brenner and Horst Letter. Sorry if either one of those was mispronounced. Eventually, Skull and his two lackeys are saved. The name of the group pulling Red Skull out of the rubble is Them. Who is Them? Them is a part of Hydra, who oversees the operations of the Secret Empire and Advanced Idea Mechanics, or AIM. Them is run by the Grand Imperator. Upon waking up, Red Skull discovers that he and Them share many similar interests, and he agrees to cooperate with them, but he wants to remain an independent contractor instead of having to sign on to the organization as a whole. From this arrangement, Red Skull is given hypno-helmets by AIM, which allow the wearer to give others extremely realistic hallucinations. Red Skull uses this to have a small group of henchmen scuffle with Captain America before fleeing. Captain America could see the villains, but nobody else could, and this made him look nuts, because they were hallucinations. The problem was made even worse when he was attacked once again, this time at his psychiatrist's office. And how in the world did they track Captain America down to his psychiatrist anyway? It seems like that wouldn't really be public information. After a short fight, Cap destroys the room and an AIM agent flees the scene, leaving Captain America looking crazy once more. Cap is certain that what he is seeing is real, and he leaves there ready to prove it. Horst is sent in for the third and final act on Captain America. The plan is to kill somebody and frame Captain America for the murder. The attacks earlier in the day were a calculated move to create a public and professional record of Captain America acting violent and erratic. After Horst leaves, we are shown something behind locked doors at AIM. Count Bornag Royale wants to know what's inside the shell the AIM scientist is opening up. He's told that it might be the most potent device in the entire world and that they call it the Cosmic Cube. Royale is scared by the power he feels coming forth from it and demands that they don't let it fall into the hands of the Red Skull. The scientist tells him to mind his own business and focus on the task he's been given. Horst plans on killing the man who is getting Captain America's autograph, but Captain America is prepared. One strike from Cap puts Horst on the ground, where he complains that Red Skull swore that his plan couldn't fail and Captain America freaks out. His arch-nemesis lives. Captain America investigates AIM technology and shows us that Tony Stark developed a signal jammer to block out any hypnotic waves. Pretty neat that they hid it underneath the A on his head mask. The next issue is labeled The Secret of the Cosmic Cube. Issue 80 begins with the Red Skull's assassins already in police custody and Captain America on his way downtown when a plane headed towards Captain America explodes and something ejects and then takes off towards the river. Captain America runs to see if he can help. From inside the capsule, he rescues an AIM scientist. Once ashore, the researcher tells Captain America that AIM created the ultimate weapon called the Cosmic Cube and that 
Right now, the keeper is taking it to Red Skull. Why would somebody in AIM hand the cube over to Red Skull? We'll get back to that. In the meantime, it turns out that Red Skull's two lackeys might not be so fond of him after all. The only reason both of them stick around is because Red Skull is using a miniaturized neuro brain tap device to keep both of them under his hypnotic control. While visiting a big them meeting earlier in the week, Red Skull also placed one of these devices on the keeper of the cube. This is the reason why AIM is now handing the cube over to Red Skull. As Red Skull leaves the room, he has Wolfgang release the safety on his gun. In the next panel, Red Skull has Wolfgang kill himself. That, that was a little harsh for Marvel right there, but uh, the show goes on. Captain America uses an experimental rocket to catch up to AIM's plane, where they've got the cosmic cube. A brief scuffle leads to both Captain America and the Keeper being ejected from the plane. Once they hit solid ground, the Keeper runs inland. Captain America gives chase, but doesn't get far. For the first time in over two decades, Captain America and Red Skull stand face to face once more. We get this pretty awesome panel where Red Skull throws Captain America's shield at Captain America. Captain America knows that he's at a disadvantage on the Red Skull's island, so his plan is to prod an emotional response from the Red Skull so that the Red Skull is reacting with emotions instead of methodically calculating his next step. One can't discount the fact that Captain America has most likely dreamed of the day he could drop these words on the Red Skull. Captain America starts talking smack about the Nazis and how they were beaten in World War II, he goes as far as to belittle Hitler for taking the coward's way out. It has the intended effect, and Red Skull starts throwing punches. After a short brawl, Captain America gets Red Skull on the ground. Red Skull recognizes what Captain America did by toying with his emotions, and he opts to return the favor. He then tells Captain America that when Zemo murdered Bucky, the hit was ordered by Red Skull. Captain America enters a berserker's rage and dives in for a little attempted murder in a desperate bid to get some vigilante justice. This is exactly what Red Skull wanted as he releases a stun gas from the front of his shirt. While Captain America attempts to recover, Red Skull requests the Cosmic Cube. As he's about to take it into his grasp, he tells us that the cube is capable of turning one's thoughts into reality. In order to test the cube out, Red Skull sends the AIM researcher to another dimension. Red Skull continues to experiment with the cube while seemingly ignoring the now-recovered Captain America. Captain America notes that the Red Skull appears to be invincible. This arc concludes in issue 81 with the Red Skull Supreme. As the Red Skull holds the Cosmic Cube triumphantly over his head, Captain America comes at him from behind. Captain America gets in one good strike, but it's not enough to cause the Red Skull to drop the Cosmic Cube. Red Skull attacks, sending Captain America backward, shooting shockwaves from his fist and causing trees to explode. All of this is merely a show of force for the Red Skull. Red Skull then shares with us his vision of the future. Him sitting on a throne, controlling the thoughts of the people of Earth via a giant crown which broadcast his thought commands over the entire planet. From there, he'll turn the entire human race into a fighting machine focused on combat readiness and manufacturing giant war machines, the end goal being to leave Earth behind and begin his intergalactic empire. Anybody else thinking how awesome and dangerous Red Skull might be if he ever gets a hold of the Serpent Crown? But right now, Red Skull is still a guy holding a rock on an island. He brags about all the ways he could kill Captain America, but like every villain almost ever, decides that the manner of his death needs to be needlessly complicated. Red Skull wants to see if Captain America will die in battle. Red Skull then creates an opponent from the ground itself. 
Captain America quickly learns that the Beast is faster, stronger, and more agile than himself. Captain America rolls to miss a strike and catches the monstrosity off balance. The creature disappears before Captain America can finish it off. Red Skull realizes that giving Captain America a chance to fight is a mistake. He just needs to be done with him. So Red Skull begins sending Captain America to another dimension, but Captain America calls out and convinces the Red Skull that the ultimate victory would be to have Captain America work as a henchman to the Red Skull. Ugh. Or, as I like to think of it, the first time Steve Rogers submitted himself to Hydra. Red Skull likes the idea and decides to keep Captain America around. While Red Skull ponders the depths of his power, he decides that his new world needs its own version of the Knights of the Round Table. On his knees, Captain America asks for the opportunity to serve the Red Skull. And note that none of this seems forced. Red Skull then uses the Cosmic Cube to coat himself in a suit of golden armor. Wow, he is really getting behind this whole Knights of the Round Table bit. Captain America asks him to be his first knight, and then takes a knee before the Red Skull. Okay, we all know that Captain America's probably faking here, but it does not change the fact that he kneeled before the Red Skull and asked to serve him. Once again, all hail the original Hydra Steed. Doesn't last long. Captain America leaps towards the Red Skull and attempts to get him to drop the cube. Red Skull's control of the cube lessens as Captain America forces his grip loose. Red Skull refuses to be undone and commands the power of the cube to break the island apart. As it breaks apart, Captain America and Red Skull tumble hand in hand, the cosmic cube at the center of their tumultuous handshake. It's Captain America who lets go first, but he follows this up with a strike from his shield, which finally breaks the Red Skull's grasp from the Cosmic Cube. As it flies through the air, Red Skull jumps after it and into the water. Once in the ocean, he finds that the weight of his armor pulls him down to the ocean floor. Captain America escapes the sinking island and pulls himself up on the only remaining rocky outcropping. Both Red Skull and the Cosmic Cube have disappeared beneath the ocean surface and are nowhere to be seen. Hundreds of leagues below, the Cosmic Cube rests on the ocean floor. The shifting tides quickly cover it with sand and flotsam as it disappears beneath the waves. We don't learn how Red Skull escapes this until Tales from Suspense, Volume 1, Issue Number 89 where Red Skull and Captain America meet up once more. Here Red Skull tells our hero that he knew he was doomed and that Captain America had given up on finding him. While on the bottom of the ocean, the power of the Cosmic Cube still radiated toward Red Skull, and he was capable of using this power to live without breathing. He stayed there until the cube had given him enough strength to swim to safety. As for the Cosmic Cube... We learn its fate in Avengers Volume 1, Issue Number 40. Captain America calls back to the rest of the Avengers. He tells them about the Cosmic Cube and gives them its coordinates so they can attempt to retrieve it. Upon closing in on the area, the Avengers run across the Submariner, who is in the process of attacking a naval base in retaliation for the base opening fire on him. A fight breaks out during which Goliath warns Namor that he had better not be here for the Cosmic Cube. Namor knew nothing of the Cube, but now his curiosity is sparked. Once he returns to the water, he uses the local fish to help him seek out the Cube, and it doesn't take long for them to find it. Namor digs through the layers of sand, and soon it comes into his possession. Within moments, Namor has figured out how to use the Cosmic Cube, that it can transform thought into reality, and wouldn't you know it, his first reaction is that 
first the Avengers, and then all of the surface world should know his wrath. As he battles the Avengers, they quickly surmise that he must have located the Cosmic Cube. The bulk of the battle comes down to Namor and Hercules. The two end up in the water together where Namor is going to defeat his opponent, but he considers such a victory dishonorable, so he takes the fight on land where Hercules can fight back. To ensure they have a fair fight, Namor uses the cube to keep his skin wet at all times. He is currently wearing the cube around his neck and has been keeping it invisible for reasons that are never made clear. When he goes in to fight with Hercules, he decides to make the necklace visible again. Wasp notices the necklace and shoots it off his chest. As the cube falls to the ground, it returns to its original form before tumbling into an extremely deep crevice. Namor can't recover it at this time and jumps back into the ocean and leaves the area. The issue ends with a fabulous three-panel sequence. As Mole Man walks about underground, the cosmic cube falls from above. He picks it up and admires how pretty it looks, but assumes that it is nothing more than a child's toy, an infant's building block. He tosses it back over his shoulder and complains that what he needs is weapons, not toys, and walks away. The story of the Cosmic Cube continues in Captain America, Volume 1, Issues 115 through 119, published in 1969. The cube was then lost for months, but Red Skull had never stopped looking for it. He had agents throughout the world constantly scanning and probing for it. Then, shortly after a volcanic eruption near the Mediterranean, a man discovered the cube while walking on the beach. He came home to a poor shack where he wished that he could eat like they do in a palace. Suddenly, his table was filled with the finest foods. Instead of using the cube for evil, the man used it to better the lives of the people of his village. This unusual prosperity is what caught the attention of Red Skull's agents who recognized it as the work of the Cosmic Cube. Red Skull's agents broke into the man's palace and stole the cube. It was nice, if only for a moment, to see the good that the cube can bring to the world. I mean, Really, how many heroes have held it and never put it to as much good use as this one man? Once more, the Red Skull reveled in regaining the culmination of his dreams, but now that the ultimate prize had been found, his henchmen wanted to know what good it was going to do them. They wanted to know that they are more than hired lackeys and feel that since they shared in the danger that they should get in on part of this reward. In response to this, the Red Skull reminds them that they would be nothing without him and transports one of them to the edge of the universe. This pretty much shuts the rest of the group up. The rest of the group freaks out on this and Red Skull continues to show his power by bringing the guy back. Now that he has the power, Red Skull is convinced it's time to go destroy Captain America. He shows up at Steve Rogers' house, shoving a gun in his face and smacking him around. As per usual, he wants to grandstand and show off his power. Captain America attempts to attack when he gets the chance, but Red Skull is prepared this time. The Red Skull that has been smacking Captain America around isn't even the real one, but an illusion. Red Skull blasts Captain with a ray and then proceeds to use the weakened Captain America as a footstool while he enjoys his victory. He then tells the story of how he found the Cosmic Cube once more. At the end of his story, Captain America attacks Red Skull, who uses the Cosmic Cube to transport the Captain to another world. Captain America is out of action and hasn't been seen for a while. Rick Jones has been Captain America's sidekick lately, and he's worried because he hasn't heard anything from the boss man for a while. Rick checks in with Captain's ex-girlfriend, Sharon Carter, and the Avengers, and the Team Brigade. Nobody seems concerned. Finally, Rick considers another possibility. Perhaps Captain America is giving him the cold shoulder for a reason. 
Maybe he's indirectly trying to tell Rick to get lost, but Rick just isn't taking the hint. The Red Skull is sending Captain America through one nightmarish scenario after another, all in an attempt to drive our hero mad. Nothing seems to work, but then he gets an idea. First, he digs deep into the captain's mind to find those he loves before bringing forth Sharon Carter. Once she's there, he lets loose the real twist. Red Skull makes himself look just like Captain America. And now Captain America looks like Red Skull. Red Skull's plan works brilliantly. The issue ends with Sharon clinging to what appears to be Captain America while believing she has been captured by the Skull. The next issue, Red Skull and Sharon leave together while Captain America is forced to deal with the horror of this new reality. Red Skull informs the authorities where they can pick up his lookalike, and Captain America is forced to flee the police. Events have finally gotten to the point where they grab the attention of the Avengers as they start to wonder where Captain America is and why he hasn't been dealing with the threat of the Red Skull on the loose. It almost sounds like the Avengers recognize rivalries and purposely keep their distance from such conflicts. Hmm. Rick Jones decides to track Captain America down and find out what's up. He finds Captain America in Central Park. Upon approaching him, the Red Skull tells Rick that he doesn't need the help of a teenage brat. He follows this up by telling him to get out of here, and if he needs him, he'll call upon him. The Red Skull didn't know it, but this particular choice of words hits Rick especially hard as it reinforces his existing insecurities. Rick leaves the scene crying. Captain America evades capture by the police and makes it to Avengers Mansion. Upon entering the gym, he attempts to convince the Avengers that he's really Captain America, but he gets attacked. After a drawn-out battle of Captain America attempting to convince them of his true identity, Vision picks up what he thinks is Red Skull up off the floor and knocks him unconscious by hurling him head first into a wall. Holy concussions and spinal injuries, Batman! Before they can tie him up, the Avengers are called to report to S.H.I.E.L.D. Back at Central Park, Red Skull has decided how he wants to kill Captain America. Finally? He forces Sharon to visit the Avengers mansion and has her ask Jarvis to see the Red Skull. Once they are face to face, the real Red Skull has Sharon pull out her gun and tries to force her to kill Captain America, who is begging for his life. At the last moment, Sharon can't pull the trigger. Red Skull bemoans the fact that the only thing the Cosmic Cube can't overcome is the emotion of love. Not sure if that makes much sense, but whatever. Since Sharon won't kill Captain America for him, Red Skull decides to transport Cap to an island where a group of Skull's ex-lackeys are waiting for an opportunity to kill Red Skull because they are still mad that they didn't get rewarded for helping out with the Cosmic Cube. This group is known as the Exiles. In the next issue, Captain America fights against the Exiles, while Red Skull lives a life of luxury by taking advantage of Captain America's good name to get free stuff all over town. Most notably, the usually camera-shy Captain America is all about posing for photos. When asked about his sidekick, Rick Jones, he tells the press that he doesn't need a sidekick, and that kid in the Bucky Barnes costume was a publicity stunt. All of this press gives Red Skull the idea not just to kill Captain America, but to also destroy his reputation. We are then shown a surprising development at AIM headquarters. MODOK, who appeared to die after the AIM submarine he was on exploded, is shown to be alive. If you want to know um, about the events leading up to this moment, check out my video on the first appearance of MODOK or my upcoming video on the origins of MODOK.
I'm going to jump ahead one second to issue 119 to where Modoc tells us how he escaped. He had essentially beaten Captain America when he was taken out by his own AIM scientist, who then fled in the escape sub. Modoc then caused the rest of the submarine to explode, but encased himself in a mental globe of force which gave him air to breathe and protected him from the ocean pressure. Once he got near the surface, he released mental sonic waves to command more loyal AIM agents to rescue him, at which time he resumes his leadership position. Remember, earlier in this episode, AIM had possession of the Cosmic Cube, so they know what they're up against. MODOK and the AIM scientist are searching for a way to make the Cosmic Cube powerless to ensure that it can never be used against AIM. Back into issue 118, where AIM scientists are continuing their experiments in attempting to find a way to combat the Cosmic Cube. They are close to success when they get a catholite block to change shape into a sphere. The rest of issue 118 is mostly Captain America training with the Falcon before teaming up and taking down Red Skull's exiles. Of note here, to not be recognized by the exiles as Red Skull, Captain America removes Red Skull's mask. And anybody who might be getting excited that we're getting a face reveal here on the Red Skull should note that Captain America uses mud and such to disguise his face so that no one will be able to recognize the face beneath the mask. Red Skull complains about this at one point, but it seems like he who holds the Cosmic Cube should be capable of finding a way around that or, you know, making it not a mask. The story concludes in Captain America, Volume 1, Issue Number 119. It begins with the Red Skull once again changing his mind about how he wants to end Captain America's life. Really? At this point, it feels like the wishy-washiness of Red Skull constantly toying around with and changing his mind about how Captain America is going to die has been completely overplayed. Once again, he wants to find the satisfaction of doing the job himself. He's grown tired of running around town pretending to be Captain America. I more or less skipped over most of that portion of the story, but these issues are a fun read just for those panels alone. Another reason to read these issues are to see the beginnings of the bond between Falcon and Captain America, which I really didn't focus on here. Uh, check it out if that's something that you are interested in. The real Red Skull uses the cube to turn his appearance back into that of the Red Skull. He wants to add some dramatic and symbolic flair to the upcoming showdown, so he returns to the castle in Birchtesgaden, Birchtesgaden, um, yeah, in the German castle. Or is it Austrian? Or I, I don't know. It's the same castle where he and Hitler once made plans on how to take over the world. It's from here that he desires to launch his new global conquest. But first, he needs to deal with Captain America. The Skull picks up the cube and brings Captain America and Falcon to him. Captain America claims that this battle is between himself and Skull, so Falcon shouldn't be a part of this. The Skull, rightfully so, points out that the Falcon helped Captain America take out the Exiles. Furthermore, anybody who allies themselves with Captain America is an enemy of Red Skull. Even animals. Red Skull uses the Cosmic Cube to have Red Wing materialize in a cage right beside him. The Falcon gets all huffy over this and decides to charge Red Skull. Captain America attempts to warn him while Red Skull goads him on, telling him that all he needs to do is take the cube away from him. Instead, the Falcon runs into an invisible but solid barrier. Captain America attempts to goad Red Skull into putting down the cube, and, and I really do love this exchange. How would you be without it? I'll never be without it. Red Skull decides it's time to change Captain America back to his real form. That's cool, dude, but why Why did you give him his shield back? 
you know that that shield is going to F you up. Falcon is shocked to learn that it was Captain America who trained him how to fight. Captain America and Red Skull prepare to face off. Captain America and Falcon attempt to attack the Red Skull, but he ends up turning the room into water. Falcon disappears for a moment to take care of something before resurfacing. Captain America hopes that as long as they can convince the Skull to keep toying around with them, that they might get an opportunity to attack. Back at AIM headquarters, Modak informs the AIM agents that it's time to destroy the cube. All they need to do is activate their Catholite block to begin Phase 3 of the plan. The water around Cap and Falcon is changed into sand and they come to rest in the middle of a desert. Red Skull is watching them and Captain America asks Falcon to create a distraction. He charges at Red Skull. It's just enough of a distraction for Captain America to throw his shield and launch the cube out of Red Skull's hands. See, I told you he never should have given Captain America his shield back. Captain America and Red Skull break into a brawl as both attempt to recover the Cosmic Cube. Red Skull attempts to recover it, but is stopped short by Falcon who uses his body to trip the Skull up. Skull lying on the ground, reaches out and grabs a hold of the cube once more. Only now, it begins to melt in his hands. Red Wing dives to attack Red Skull, and we learn that that was why Falcon disappeared underwater earlier, to free Red Wing. Even though the cube is melting, Red Skull finds enough power remaining in it to fade out and escape elsewhere. After both Red Skull and the cube are gone, were shown that the AIM scientists and their Catholite were most likely behind today's victory and the instability of the cube. The Cosmic Cube shows up for one more story arc that I want to cover before we, we get into a certain Eternal, but I'll cover both of these in separate episodes in the future. Looking back at this episode, we see the Cosmic Cube enter the scene in a big way, and it is immediately tied to high-profile characters and high-profile events such as the return of Red Skull and our introduction to characters that eventually become major Marvel characters such as Falcon and MODOK. From the moment it is introduced into the Marvel Universe, the Cosmic Cube makes waves and becomes a focal point of all sorts of villains. Thanks for watching Cosmic Comics. Feel free to check out my other channel, Cosmic Peppers, where I do hot food challenges, discuss pepper history, and do pod reviews. Feel free to hit any of those buttons below. I'm out.